Hey guys, my name is J Mikey and today I will be showing you how to uh, paint a portrait like this using Photoshop. Um, this is my first ever tutorial so please pardon me for any um, problems you might experience during the tutorial. If you have any questions, um, put in the comment section and I will be sure to answer them. Thank you so much. So let's get right to it. So the first thing we are going to do is to get a suitable image that we want to paint or the painting make sure it's a very sharp image it's very important to use sharp images if you use a blurry image you might not get the best because we're going to be focusing a lot on the details so i'll be using this picture of my sister and if you zoom in you will see that we can see a lot of details in the eyes so that's a very good one let's begin so all i did was just to drag it here like i said before select the ones you need which is this you guys have to pardon me, this is my first tutorial so I might not be as good but as I keep doing it I believe I'll get better so just bear with me so the next thing you want to do is to duplicate this layer there are many ways you can duplicate it um, you could um, press halt and then drag and it doubles that's the fastest way you can do it so we need to duplicate this layer because this one will be the reference and this one will be what we'll trace with because the next thing is going to be to select the outline. To select the another layer. First of all, let's select the uh, brush tool. Change to this particular one right here. See, it looks really rough, but you just have to reduce the size. Right click and reduce the size. Or you can press uh, bracket in to make it smaller and bracket out to make it bigger. So we want to be about this small. Yeah, this is good. We can reduce the flow to about 30. Yeah, this is good enough. The next stage would be <clears throat> okay, before you go to the next stage, make sure that you make all your layers smart objects. The ones you are not going to be drawing on, make them smart objects. Very important. If not, you can mistakenly you can deceive yourself and think you are if I rasterize this and then I start drawing outlines here. Yeah. By the time I invisible this, there's nothing because you've drawn it on the picture itself, which is very wrong. So take note of that. So I'll make this a smart object. Create another layer. You can call it outline. And let's begin. So the next step is for us to get our pen tool, the pen tool right here. And then we begin. So this first layer, we need the picture itself because we are practically tracing. If it was an it was, if it was an organic painting, an organic sketch or painting, we would scale. There's something we call scaling. So it's scaling with. But since we are in a digital world, you don't need to scale. All you have to do is just trace out from the original picture, and then we will delete. So let's begin. So I'll start with the face. Okay, there was something. I think I forgot to explain. Um, what you do is after you draw your, this is how we draw outlines. When you draw any markings, right click, stroke path, make sure this is ticked, make sure this checkbox is ticked, and then you press OK and then it simulates it. This is how we do it. You want to draw the line, right click, stroke path. Make sure it's not in pencil but in brush and make sure this is ticked. OK. this next stage is the hair that one when you're working on the hair you might not need um, the pen tool because it's it's a rough kind of image so you can just simply use your hand to freestyle this because we're still gonna do a lot of um, how do I say a lot of rough outlines so we want to start extending the hair like this yeah. so for now you can just use your free hand but if you want to stick with the pen tool, that's fine. By the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet. I forgot to add. It's one of the smallest Wacom tablets, but it's really effective. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, that's still fine. I've done quite a dozen paintings before I got this Wacom tablet. So I'd like to just correct these aspects. Yeah. You can correct aspects too if you want. OK, 
okay now for the face the eyes the details in the face are the most important parts you don't want to mess it up too much so let's go Everything, a lot of things rests on the details. What you can't see, you just have to assume, and assuming isn't always good, except you're a professional artist. Uh, there are something else I ought to have added since I am not a professional Photoshop artist, I am just a self taught designer. So, I'm really open to learn myself. So, if you have tips, tricks for me and say, hey J Mikey, the way you did it here, it's actually easier if you do it like this. I would really appreciate that because as much as you guys are here to learn, I am also here to learn. Moving on, I would just like to save this as Dara's painting, Photoshop, save. Oh, it's very good, you get addicted to saving. Um, control S, do it till you do it occasionally, make it a habit to so always control S, control S. Okay, moving on now. I'm going to create another first of all we would make this invisible because we don't need it for now we are working with the um, reference and our painting itself the next thing we're going to do is to create another layer we're going to call this one foundation now this this patterns i'm giving you they are not the professional styles they are just my way of doing it you can come up with easy ways of doing it and that would be very fine it's whatever works for you so don't please don't go and argue with other people and say j mikey said in photoshop this is the only way no this is just how i do it and i didn't start like this i evolved into this so you can also start with this and maybe evolve into something better and if you're going to share it with me that would be nice i would really like that anyway, foundation is the next step i forgot to add something when you're going into the pen tool you can either click the pen tool or press p to press p go to your pen tool b is for brush V is for the is for the pointer or the selection tool. So back to the brush. Foundation. First thing we do is to select our lasso tool or the pen tool. But in this case, I'll use the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool. For this case, you can use the pen tool. It works the same way. I'll use both so that you could. I mean, I'll use both in different instances so that you can know how which one is best for you. But let me put this one back on so that when you know where I'm going. Okay, so what we want to do now is to select the skin. Select everywhere that has to do with her skin. So after you select your polygonal lasso tool, you begin to mark it out. I'm going to speed this up again so that I won't waste too much of your time. So see you when I'm done. Okay, quick one. When you're selecting with the polygonal lasso tool, if at any point in time you select the wrong thing for example if i click this now i've made a mistake simply press backspace okay that was something i learned after <laughs> after several years of using photoshop so don't forget that if you already know it awesome okay this is where we are now um after doing this this is all the skin you can notice I I selected a bit into our hair. Don't worry about that. I didn't select the entire hair because we plan to make the hair black and with a brownish highlight, of course. But I'm selecting into it a little bit because parts of our skin might show in the hair. So wherever it to show, we know that we've covered it up. So when we keep painting, you will understand it more. So I'm going to make this invisible again. And then next thing is to select the paint pocket look for the, the second to the brightest color of her skin let me explain how this works now we are looking for the color that isn't isn't the lightest and isn't the darkest the lightest color will be the highlights which will be the whitish areas 
But once you select the, 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 the color that is a step lower from that, that's going to be the foundational color. So in that case, I'm going to be selecting something of this range. So if I press my Alt, I'm selecting something like this. Um, sorry. Okay. So something not as uh, uh, something like this. Yeah. So so like the paint bucket, I will dip it in it. So you can see it's covered everything, even our outline. No problem at all. Take the foundation and drop it under the outline. Once you do that, your stuff comes back on. That's how you understand that how you position your layers matter. Whatever layer is on top of another layer, it works just as you've arranged it. So, moving on, we're done with the foundation. Next thing is to create another layer. Mind you, the layer is in between the outline and the foundation. So, we call this one DRK or dark. You say dark, not DRK. Normally, when I'm painting, I just write DRK. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to write dark. And after we've done that, we change our brush tool to this. Now, a lot of people ask me that the brushes I use for my paintings, did I download them? Are they third party plugins? I'm like, no, every brush I use are default brushes that come with Photoshop. So now you notice now that if we're, if we're going to stop painting, okay, let's first select the color. A dark shade, probably this around this, not too dark, like somewhere around here. Okay. Now, if, you, if we start painting, you see it to feel spinning out of the line, spinning out of our boundary. So what we're going to do is a nice trick we, we use for things like this. is you press control remember our foundation already has an outline of its own so we press control and we click on this and it automatically creates an outline so what you would do with this outline is to click on this layer that we want to work on and then you click this so it automatically masks out what the outline is so let me let me do that again so we can fully understand Ctrl D to deselect. Now, if I click on my lasso tool and I select any aspect, and then I come here with this masking tool and I click it, you see, but I did it on the foundation. So you can see that there is a, that has masked out every other thing. So that's not where we need it. We need it in dark. So don't forget Ctrl, click on the foundation, press the layer you want to work on and click this and automatically creates a masking effect. So you can see now that when I go to my brush tool and then I paint, it doesn't spill out. See? It doesn't spill. That's the function of that. So let us begin. I usually tell people when you want to paint on Photoshop, it's different from when you want to paint in real life. In the sense that you need more control. And the only way you can get that is when you reduce your opacity or your flow. In my case, I do with reducing my flow to say 3. 2 or 3, let's say 3%. I reduce it because this is the first layer and the first layer is going to have the faintest um, color. So now, um, to bring this one closer, I think I just... Power, you can also just do this again. Same trick we just learned. I select this area and then I click this. It isolates, you see? So we can bring it closer so we can see what we are doing. So let us begin. No, sorry. Yeah, so we go to our mask, brush tool, set on 3%, and then we start brushing. This is another tip you must learn. When you're brushing with Photoshop, the smaller your brush, the more the impact. The bigger your brush, the faint the impact. So, painting painting this, this is as a as a sharper impact than when you paint this. You can see the difference. These are the tricks you must learn. So if you want to paint this forehead, your brush has to be big enough. So you see? So don't forget your brackets, your bracket in and bracket out. That's the one you use. So let me keep brushing this. Look for the areas that are dark like this. This place. So you might 
might notice that everything is still looking faint and like what's this guy doing this is how you start this is how you begin so you can see at least i have a good um control over my brush don't forget increase the brush for a big now you see i reduced the brush for this area when i want to do this place right here i reduce it again because i want more impact you know and then for here i can increase the brush here you see for this place this entire area seems dark so i can brush this entire area now don't be don't panic when you start when you when you begin this for the first time and it seems like you're doing rubbish just keep at it keep going keep going you, you don't become a pro overnight but i should show you my initial paintings you would see how very 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 weird they looked compared to the ones i do now so it just takes time and practice time and practice oh this is bright so i go to my eraser i click e is for eraser by the way these are the things i'll teach in the basic tutorial so if you're not really if you're not really into photoshop yet i think it's better you aim for you go for the first tutorial the introductory tutorial before stepping into this one if you have you have any questions you can comment below and i would probably add the knowledge to subsequent tutorials i've clicked my eraser tool i've noticed that this area is a little bit bright so um, you can see a little bit bright this place is a little bit bright so i think there's something we're supposed to do let's get the outline of the eyebrow just for guides this is not the final work this is going to be just to help us know where certain things are so if I invisible this and bring back this and we trace out where the eyebrow is exactly this is black I've put my my, my brush is on black Let's increase a little bit so we can know exactly where the eyebrow is this will be deleted later just just so you know okay that's that so we go back to our previous color and then we continue so now what we want to do is to focus on half of the face just for more details there's also a trick we do again um certain areas require certain aspects of colors so what we do is we also draw it out on the outline layer please don't try to draw outlines on the dark layer or the foundational layer this would be catastrophic Make sure everything that has to do with lines are in your outline layer. So let's make this one invisible again. Bring back this and change the brush to this tool. And now we just want to demarcate certain areas, just to help us when we want to, when we want to add more details to color. So for example, this oh sorry, this has to be black. So this this so you begin to note the areas that need shading um this right here right here this like this 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 might not make much sense now but when we start adding details it will See that the cheekbone stops somewhere around here. Around here. Around here. This is not necessary, by the way. You may or you may not do this, but just to build up your confidence when you want to continue adding colors, that's why we do things like this to help you know that okay, this is where this is. Sorry, let me erase this. Yeah. Okay, this looks creepy, but it's needed. Sorry, Dad. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, this also. And we didn't even do much about the neck. This has the dark region. This one is an actual line. I don't think I'll be raising this one. Okay, 
Oh yeah, this one's too. Okay. Now we can go back to our... <laughs> I know this looks creepy. Don't worry. Don't be scared. We raise it soon. So now, let's focus on half of the face. And we can move closer now. Uh, yes. Full concentration on half of the face. Let's start with this region right here. Go back to our dark. We're on 12. We shouldn't be on 12. We should be on like 5 right now. The darker you want it to get, the more effect. Let me get 6. No. Oh, 6 is too much. 3. So erase this one and then brush this side and then I realize that the eyelid is darkish so I erase this one brush okay there hasn't been a mistake I've been painting on black it shouldn't be on black but it's not a major mistake that was why no wonder Moving on now. I think I can even make this darker. Let me make it dark. Okay, moving on. So you can see how my brush size is increasing and decreasing. No, it's too much. Yeah. You see, I went really small for these sharp edges. And then as I want to fade out, I continue increasing my brush size. So just like that. That's how you do it. And this one again, I can go really dark. This area. So you see, our outlines are giving us an idea of where we have to stop brushing and where we should continue brushing. Now this I can continue all the way to this point. This one too. You see? Now I know that this one should be extra dark. Okay, that's for this side. Now for the other side. If you think this is a messed up, just zoom out and see that we're making progress. Okay, now for the other side. So the best way to make your colors blend is when you increase your brush. When your brush is reduced, it's more difficult to blend your colors. And it's always important you, you follow your stroke, the stroke of your brush based on the direction. Like in this aspect now, the neck goes this way. So it's only nice to be drawing your strokes up and, and um, horizontal pattern. If your if your if your if your light is going this way, it's best you brush this way. This one is almost vertical, so you can see me doing this. In cases where it's like this, you see me brushing this way. It's not nice to be brushing this way. In this case, so in the nose region, you see it this way, so you brush this way. So all those things help your your brush a lot. Okay. I hope we've learned a thing or two so far. I would be giving you the remaining in the part two of this tutorial. So this is just the beginning. There's still a lot that we still have to do, but you can see that we're already getting a realistic look in the part two series. I would elaborate and we'll go into more details. See you there.